I count myself not worthy to stand before you this morning to preach the gospel that God has placed on my heart. Counting myself this amazing opportunity to be at Antioch during this time. Truly, I wake, every up, wake up every morning thanking God for being in such a wonderful congregation. Thanking God for each of you. If I've never said, if I haven't said it these few months I've been here, I appreciate all of you this morning. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your caring. I thank you for your feedback you've been giving me too. I appreciate that. Keep it coming. But it's all good. I'm glad to be in the place today. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and get into this word that I got for you this morning so, so we can get on out of here and go get some breakfast or whatever you might want to do. After the, I'm sorry. So you can get over to the ministry fair. So we can put you to work. Am I right about it this morning? It is good to be here. Let, let, I want to read something to you before I go into uh, to today's text, if you will. And I'll read it this way. I, had, I, I wrote it down so I would make sure I would get it correctly. Joseph R. Biden, Jr., President of the United States of America, by the virtue of the authority vested in him by the Constitution and the laws of the United States, do hereby proclaim March 2023 as Women's History Month. He calls upon all Americans to observe this month to celebrate International Women's Day with appropriate programs, ceremonies, and activity. With that being said, we're going to be changing course this morning on our theme, and I'll get to that just a little bit. And now I want to turn your attention to our text for this morning, and we're going to go to the Old Testament, and we're going to go to the book of Judges, the fourth chapter, beginning around the fourth verse. Judges, the fourth chapter, beginning around the fourth verse. If you have it, say amen. I'm still waiting on a few more folks. If that's okay, it should be on the screen behind me. And we'll read these words as follow. Now Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lepidoth, was judging Israel at that time. She used to sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the people of Israel came to her for judgment. She sent and summons Barak, the son of Abinam, from Kadesh Naphtali, and said to him, Has not the Lord, the God of Israel, commanded you, Go gather your men at Mount Tabor, taking 10,000 from the people of Naphtali and the people of Zebulon? And I will draw out Sisera, the general of Jabin's army, to meet you by the river Kishon with his chariots and his troops, and I will give him into your hand. Barak said to her, If if you go with me, I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, the road on which you are going will not lead to your glory. For the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Then Deborah rose and went with Barak to Kadesh. And Barak called, Zebulon, called out Zebulon and Nephthali to Kadesh. And 10,000 men went up at his heel, and Deborah went up with him. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you now. And we thank you for this appointed place and appointed time, Lord God, for your word to be preached, Lord God. We pray now, God, that this word that is going to be spoken this morning would touch those here in the sanctuary and those virtually, Lord God, that they would see the goodness of the Lord and how you are victorious in our life. And God, we'd be so careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. It is in Christ's magnificent name we pray. Amen and amen. I want to take you back in time in a moment in my life that I believe put me on a different trajectory as far as leadership. And I want to go back to when I got my first job leaving the military. I mean, it was a great gig. 
came with lots of money, gave him a nice little office, if you will, had great benefits, and it had all these wonderful things that came along with I thought I was making it, y'all. And I was sitting there at the job doing what I thought I needed to get done. And the client that I was supporting came to me and said, Jeff, we are thinking about, we're not pleased with what's going on here. And we are thinking about canceling not just you, but the entire contract. And I can tell you, no program manager wants to ever hear cancel and contract all in the same sentence. Because that doesn't go well. And so after they said this to me, in a panic, I left that building, ran down to my car, got my phone, and I called my boss at the time. Her name was Rebecca. And I called Rebecca, who goes by Becky. I said, Becky, I want you to know I'm just having a horrible day. And I began to explain to her that I felt like I had stepped on the proverbial landmine and one of my legs was blown out from under me. I said, they said this, they said that, they did all these things against poor Jeff. She let me finish. And she said something to me that I didn't quite see coming. She said to me, she said, Jeff, you know that one leg that you got remaining? I need you to get right back in that building, do the job that we hire you to do. And you ever have that moment in life when respect and dislike collide? Y'all know what I'm talking about? So my respect for her went high, but I disliked what she said to me. And what I mean by that is, Rebecca told me what I needed to hear and not what I wanted to hear. And what she demonstrated in that moment in time is what I like to refer to as courageous leadership. Courageous leadership. And as we look at Women's History Month, I thought it important to take some time to talk to you about women leadership and women in the church. Somebody say amen this morning. Mother's Day cannot be the only day that we talk about the importance of women in the church. Amen, somebody. I know a month or so, you know, I've been here almost three, three months, praise God. A month or so ago, I stood before you and I said, we cannot be a church that is disconnected from what's going around in the world. And locally in our community. I didn't want to leave you with the impression that I was just referring to the injustices that we see in life. I also want to include the achievements and the accomplishments of a major demographics in our church. And not just in our church, but churches all around America and all around the world. And I believe that include the women here in this church. And so that's why I'm going to take a few moments to kind of talk to you about Deborah. And the courageous leadership style that she demonstrated through this text. It has been my, my, my tradition to take a, a few seconds to kind of give you the contextual background of where we, where we are in the text. I'm going to go a little longer this morning on the contextual background because I need to unpack uh, the cultural things and what was going on here in Judges so we can see the connection and the relevance to 2023. So bear with me as I, I give you a little bit more backdrop about where we are in Judges. And so in Judges, we, we find that this is after the time that they have been led out of Egypt. And Joshua has led them to the promised land. Abraham has conquered the Canaanites and they find themselves in a situation where they are being disobedient to God's word. And God raises up these judges to uh, provide uh, guidance to Israel to repent and come back to God. So they always had this cycle. They serve God. Judges come, they go back away. They serve. They had all these things going back and forth. So this is how the judges apply to this particular story. 
uh, the Bible says that there were at least 12 judges. And to my limited experience, we always hear predominantly about the male judges, but rarely about the woman judge. All of us know this wonderful story of Samson. Probably seen the movies and probably can quote some of the stories. We've heard the story of Gideon, who was also a judge. But what about the story of Deborah? That's why I think it's important to highlight that, uh, this story, during Women's History Month. And we look at Deborah, and the, the text indicates that she was a judge. She was a prophetess, and she was a wife. And I know, obviously, we all know what a wife is, but maybe not familiar with the term prophetess and judge. A prophetess is a prophet, a proclaimer of the will of God. That's the category she found herself in. But more importantly, or also importantly, she was also a judge. I think we ought to be careful because we can easily correlate what a judge here in America does as opposed to a judge back in the Old Testament days when Deborah was a judge. Now, don't get me wrong. A judge, being a judge here in America is a wonderful achievement, and I get all of that. But this judge role was far more than a courtroom or far more important than determining guilt or innocence. The role that Deborah found herself in, she was actually leading a nation. And they were coming to her for judgment as she sat under the palm tree. So she had this huge responsibility of a lot of people coming to talk to her about all the things that they were going through. But she also had the authority to send them to war. I don't know all about the judiciary system, but I don't think there's anywhere in our Constitution where the courts can send anyone to war. But Deborah had this responsibility. So I've given you the contextual background. Now I want to tell you how we landed here in this fourth chapter. And if you read the very few verses at the beginning of this fourth chapter, you will see that uh, Judge Ahud had died. And of course, as I said, there was an up and down. And so when he died, the nation began to fall into sin and being disobedient towards God. And as a result of those actions, God sold them into slavery or they, they delivered them into slavery to the Canaanites. Jabin was the king of the Canaanites, and he had a commander by the name of Sisera. And they had 900 chariots of iron. The Bible said they had 900 chariots of iron. And they were cruel and inflicted punishment upon the people of Israel for 20 years. And this is where we find the story of where Deborah steps in and tries to bring back Israel from their disobedience from God. And we find in this story that she is sitting under a tree, the palm of Deborah, and, and all the people of Israel came to her for judgment. And as she finished with all of that one day, in her mind, she switched from talking about all of the, the, the land claims, all of the divorces, all of, the, all of these things, she switched to, hey, where's Barak? Somebody, go, hit, go get him and bring his butt to me. I, I'm just going straight forward with you this morning. Go get him, bring him here so I can talk to him about what God wants him to do. With that being said, I want to leave with you. Three characteristics of a courageous leader. So she, she summons him and she brings him forward and she says, did not God tell you to go do something? And, and, and she tells him in this, all of this is, is, is just fascinating. She says, God's going to do the work. You just got to show up. Oh, somebody say amen. God's going to do the work in our life. Sometimes we just got to show up. Show up and stand up and do the work of the Lord. And she tells him how God's going to do it. You go get these people and draw them out, and God's going to deliver them into your hands. But then he makes that statement. If you go, I'll go. But if you don't go, I ain't going. The first characteristic I, I want to share with you is that 
a courageous leader will tell you what you need to hear. Somebody say amen. See, back in my introductory story, Becky could have told me, Jeff, I'm so sorry all this happened to you. It was so unfair. You, they, this shouldn't be happening to you. But she told me what I needed to hear. And uh, uh, Deborah was a courageous leader. In fact, that she told them what he needed to hear. See, I think one of the challenges of the world today is too many times we tell people what they want to hear. You're not wrong. That's okay. God's going to bless you that. Until, instead of telling them the absolute truth of what God wants us to do. That's what a courageous leader will do. And this is what Deborah had told him. She didn't sugarcoat it. God has told you to do it. You need to be about doing it. But he makes this statement that, well, you know, hey, I'll go if you'll go. But if you won't go, I ain't, I'm not going. And then Deborah goes to the second characteristic of a courageous leader, which is this. A courageous leader is going to tell you the cost of your decision. Oh, hear me out this morning. For, for she tells them that if you go down this road, it's not going to lead to your glory. Well, let's unpack this for a second. If I were to speak from a male's perspective, and I am, we got egos. No, and, and, and she was trying to speak to what she thought he would think would be something important in his life. So she tells him the cost that if you're seeking glory, and if I have to go with you, you're not going to get the glory. And she tells him that in this story that God's going to give that glory to another woman. I'm going to jump ahead a little bit and say this in, in case my time runs out. I won't get to all of the story. But I think it's important that after today, if you don't know all of this story, please go read the rest of the story because we automatically might assume that Deborah is going to be that woman. But there's a different outcome in that story. Back to my point. We have to tell people the cost of their decisions. If you do this, this is going to happen. If, if you go out and break your marriage vows, here are the consequences of your decision. If you don't manage your money, here are the consequences of your decision. If, if, if we don't exercise and do wellness, these are the consequences of our decisions. But let me bring home a little closer. If, if you leave this earth and don't know the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior, there's a place called hell. Uh oh, Lord, have mercy. People done stopped streaming and hung up on me. But there is a place called hell. We've got to tell people the consequences of our decisions. A courageous leader will lay that out for you. Yeah, you might decide to take this path, but here is what's going to happen if you go down this path. And so she lays it out to him. And the last characteristic I want to share with you is this. A courageous leader will walk with you. Let me, let, let me say this because this is where the work comes in. Leadership is not about telling people what to do. Leadership is about getting involved and helping people do what needs to be done. All too often, people like to lead from the back office, the front office, the upstairs office, or wherever it may be. But sometimes you got to get in the trenches in leadership. Leadership is not the name on the door, y'all. Leadership is the person that stands up and says, you know what, I'm going to walk with you. 
I'm going to go to this battle with you because I see in you that you are fearful, you are afraid. And Deborah stood up and walked with him. Can y'all see where I'm going with this? When we see people on this journey, yeah, it's okay if we tell them the truth and if we tell them how much it's going to cost. But the key is, are we going to walk with them? That requires a little bit more commitment when we're talking about a courageous leader. Walk with them step by step, moment by moment, as they fulfill the purpose that God has for them in their life. Well, you might be asking the question, Reverend, that's all fine and dandy that you've gone way back to the Old Testament to point out what Deborah did and all these wonderful things and all these characteristics. But what does that mean to us right here today in 2023? I believe the answer is this. I believe that we need to tell, the, tell people the truth about Jesus Christ, that he is a wonderful Savior. He is the counselor of our life. He is the beginning and the end. He can forgive you of all of your, our sins. That's what we need to tell a dying world about a living Savior that changed our lives. The song said it. He's done so much for me that I cannot tell it all. We, we also need to tell a world about the consequences of sin. The consequences of disobedience. But more importantly, we need to help people walk towards Christ. You and I are here today, in my mind, for at least one of two purposes. That first purpose is to glorify God. The other purpose is to bring souls to Christ. For in our glorifying God, we bring people to Christ. And that's what true courageous leadership. And in today's world, my God, we need some more courageous leaders. Uh, there are some things and stuff going on that just blows your mind too. I know I'm just not by myself. And in these times, leaders step forward. And Deborah, during this time that Israel was disobedient to God, she pulled on the moral fiber to try to bring them back in to do what God had called them to do. And you know how, it, so we look at Israel sometimes saying that up and down, if, but let's be real in our life. If not careful, or if we look back over our life, we've had our Israel moments where stuff was going good, we don't pray like we used to. We don't come to church like we used to or used to. But when things get a little tough, oh, we gotta go to church now, y'all. We have those ups and downs. But when we stay focused on God, the ups and the downs get a little less. I'm not saying they ever go away, but they ought to get a little less each and every time because the more we serve him, the more we trust him, the more we realize that he's brought us this far. He's certainly not going to leave us now. Am I right about it this morning? So as I close down, I want you to think about your role as a leader. Whether you're leading your family, whether you're leading your frat or your sorrows, whether you're leading on the job, whether you're leading your HOA community, whether you're in college in some type of club, if you're leading that, is what, you do, is what you're doing, is it going to glorify God? Is it going to touch the hearts and the minds of the person that you're, do, you're talking to and walk that journey each and every day with them? God bless you this morning. Would you stand with me? God bless you this morning.